Good morning. This is uh, December 2nd, Wednesday, and I'd like to begin by wishing my beautiful daughter-in-law, Julie, my son Sam's wife, a happy birthday. I believe you're 29 today. Is that correct, Julie? You're 29. So happy birthday, kiddo. I hope you have a great day. Miss you and Sammy and the kids, and uh, pray that God will bring us together soon. Happy birthday, Jules. This is uh, today's devotion, Christian Perfection. This is Philippians 3.12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfect. It is a trap to presume that God wants to make us perfect specimens of what he can do. God's purpose is to make us one with himself. In other words, to build a relationship with him. I want you to think of your kids. Although we want them to be good kids, we don't want them to be perfect little robots. Because that would take away the relationship concept. That's what Oswald is saying. He wants a relationship with us. The emphasis on holiness in this movement tends to be that God is producing specimens of holiness to put in his museum. It's not true. If you accept this concept of personal holiness, your life's determined purpose will not be for God, but for what you call the evidence of God in your life. How can we say, it could never be God's will for me to be sick? That's what he's talking about being in the, in the museum case. If it was God's will to bruise his own son, Isaiah 53, why shouldn't he bruise us? What shines forth and reveals God in your life is not your relative consistency to an idea of what a saint should be, but your genuine living relationship, there it is again, with Jesus Christ and your unrestrained devotion to him, whether we are well or whether we are sick. In other words, our physical being doesn't play on our holiness. We can be holy as God is holy when we have pneumonia or when we are in great health. Christian perfection is not, and never can be, human perfection. Christian perfection is the perfection of a relationship with God that shows itself to be true even amid seemingly unimportant aspects of human life. And we saw that a couple days ago, back when Oswald said, can we see God in the shallow things of life? Shallow meaning humble, everyday things. When you obey the call of Jesus Christ, the first thing that hits you is the pointlessness of the things you have to do. The next thought that strikes you is that other people seem to be living perfectly consistent lives. Such lives may leave you with the idea that God is, is unnecessary. That through your own human effort and devotion, you can attain God's standard for your life. In a fallen world, this can never be done. I am called to live in such a perfect relationship with God that my life produces a yearning for God in the lives of others. In other words, people will not see us making life happen under our own strength, our own abilities. We won't look like all that in a can of soda. What they're going to see is God. They'll see us being, living and moving and having our being through God. Thoughts about myself hinder my usefulness to God. In other words, I think I can do it. God's purpose is not to perfect me to a trophy in a showcase. It is getting me to the place where he can use me, so let him do what he wants to do. So my challenge today is, can we examine our relationship with Jesus and see if it is lived so honestly before God that those who see it, whether it's the workplace or at home, or at the store? Do we live a life so honest before God, with Him coming out of everything we do? Do people see it and want it? Great challenge today. Father, we thank you for uh, Oswald and his words. We especially thank you for your word. God's word means agent of change. So Lord, we pray that you would change us today. That you would change us to be more Christ-like, and that everywhere we go, people would see us, and they would want to have what we have, which is redemption. So Lord, fall upon us and change us today, we pray. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.